Hi there. I've been using Power BI for quite some time and I have five easy to implement tips for you that would make your reports shine just that little bit more. So let's go. So for this first tip, we're going to take a look at the type of visual that you want to add to your reports. Get more visuals is where you go to the app source or previously called app store or visuals store. Here you'll find all of your visuals. Now I covered Nova Silva's visuals previously and all of them are certified visuals. Now there is something about this page that bugs me because if I click on filter, I don't see a certified filter here. I would expect Microsoft to show me where to find certified visuals, but it's only that little, yeah, blue sun icon that you'll be able to use to find that information. Now on this Walnut Innovation page, you'll also see that little a certified visual button. This gets you to a Microsoft page where you can go to learn more about what a certified Power BI visual is. Now we covered this previously on the channel as well and I'll have a link down below somewhere and up above somewhere. So there's enough room for you to find out more about why going for certified visuals is very important. For my next tip, we're actually going for PowerPoint. Why would we need to go to PowerPoint? Well, PowerPoint is the ideal location to create a layout for your reports. It's very easy to put everything into visuals into Power BI. However, it doesn't make sense because it also stores that data inside Power BI. So what you want to do is you want to create a layout inside PowerPoint just adding some, some shapes here. I typically go for a rounded shape or a square shape regarding the type of organization that I'm helping out. And I typically have a left slider section and I can change the layout or the look and feel or the style of that shape so that it is transparent because there's going to be visuals there. And I typically have a large section where the main visual of that page is going to be. Now I might even have situations where I have multiple of these shapes or different variations of this. And now if I'm happy with this page, what I'll do is I'll go to file, I'll go to save as, and in the save as, I'm not going to save it as a PowerPoint file. I'm actually going to save it as a PNG portable network graphics format, yes. So the PNG files, image files, can be used inside Power BI to get you a nice look and feel as a background. So if you had multiple of these pages, you could say that you want to have all slides and images. It will create this folder with all the images separately available or in my case, I'll just have that as one value. Going back to Power BI, here I'll navigate to the page setup, canvas background, and I'll browse to the page where I have my image, image one, I'll open that and nothing will show up. And that's because there's a transparency of 100% which I want to turn down to zero. And here's my lovely background. This doesn't take a lot of uh, memory and capacity for your Power BI. So it's a lot easier on the machine. Next up, once we have that background, we also want to have the front end or the visuals themselves tie into your background because this is a blue visual and I actually want to have it as a green visual. Now to do this, we go to view and in the themes, we'll press that drop down button. All the way down there is the customize current theme. You can also save a current theme and send it over to colleagues. If you want to have multiple people use that same configuration. Now here you have all the colors and where they reside in the system. And for a color picker, I use this little nifty tool called Power Toys. 
It's a free Microsoft tool and it uses a lot of cool little features such as a image picker. So Power Toys, I'll have a link in the show uh, in the show notes and somewhere else maybe. Windows Shift C is the color code uh, color picker code. So if I press Windows Shift C, I'll immediately see the hex icon uh, or the hex code that corresponds with this type of green. If I click, I'll get the color picker and I even have a nice copy paste option here. I can use this for my first color. And now I can even go beyond this and choose a darker shade and copy that hex for color two. And with this simple change, inside the theme it looks ju that just that much better take a look this now ties in nicely with the background uh, and maybe this is your organizational color scheme this looks way better tip number three is regarding a power bi so this is a tip regarding Power BI service. So once you have your reports saved to the service, you'll have it in a workspace and you'll have a semantic model combined with that report. Now that semantic model currently isn't endorsed. And what I would highly recommend you do is you go to settings and down below, you'll find the endorsement and discovery, and there's four options. Now you'll have promoted, certified and master options available to you, and certified and master options are only available if your admin allowed you to do that. So promoting a semantic model will make it available to you. And here's the endorsement, and uh, there's also the master or and here's the certification and you'll see that it will be certified to a specific person. So making it discoverable, a certified semantic model helps for finding it. So here you'll see that that endorsement is certified. Next up is creating an app. You want to create an app from your workspace for another step of easy communicating your reports. You'll have the option to change a color code for uh, or a theme that corresponds with your organization again. And a app is a way to share your reports outside the workspace. You can add specific content, you can add even links, you can add sections. And if I click on the add content here, I'll have a list of all the reports and dashboards available to me to add to this app. If I click on add here, I'll see that I have the ability to add a section and I'll create a section for the historical report demo and historical report demo PBX. These sections can be renamed to history, for instance, and I can add reports to that section so that it's easily communicated to the end users. Now, next up, what you'll see is that a app can be shared with multiple people. It can be shared to a specific audience. The audience feature is very cool because now you can have one specific app in a workspace and have different goal uh, people or different, different target audiences for your uh, app. So you can hide items, you can add specific users or groups. So I'll share, I'll show you how that's done by adding a admin group that is able to see the historical reports that we just had. So 
if I hide a whole section, every report within that section is going to be hidden as well. And yeah, it's, it's a quite an easy way to do this. So you'll just press add or the plus sign, rename it to admins. And on the right side, you'll see the option to add it to the entire organization for the project corner. And admins, I'm only going to have Miriam, my wife, see this uh, little piece of information. There's advanced options here as well, but let's just go ahead and publish this app. Now for larger organizations or larger workspaces, it might take five to 10 minutes. I've never seen that by the way. So if you're working with projects, it might just be as fast as go to the app. You'll see that green theme that we covered when we created it. And on the top left, we also have the ability to choose the different audiences. Because I'm the admin of this app, I have these options. Uh, and here you'll see that if I click on the admins or on the project corner, I might see or not see the historical information. And those were my five tips for Power BI usage that every PMO should be aware of. Now you might like these other videos that are on screen right now or subscribe for early notice on my next video.